I'm originally from Colombia, South America. I was born in the jungles of the Andes, and uh, I've always had felt a spirit of rejection in me, and I found out later in time it was because my mother and my father had not been married, and neither one of them wanted me. By the time I was nine months old, I was given to one of my aunts because my mother did not want to take care of me. After that, I found out that I was taken to my grandparents' house to, to be taken care of. By the time I was about seven to eight years old in the jungles, I had such an emptiness, a loneliness that's indescribable. And that is when you're rejected. I found out through the California University that it's no different than having a broken arm or a broken leg. That's how painful it is. So living with that, I felt shame, I felt condemnation, I felt guilty not having a father and a mother when other kids did. But later, by the time I was eight, uh, an American company came through the Andes and this American man came and told me that he wanted to adopt me and become my father. And uh, I was so thrilled to have that chance. He explained that in America I could have three meals and go to school and he would be my father and his fiance would be my mother. I was ecstatic. But ended up after they did receive me, I did come to America, but he ended up going to work in Vietnam and he left me with his fiance. Found out. I felt that abandonment and loneliness again, and not really understanding the language, English, I was a very confused child, very lost. So ended up later, I couldn't understand why I felt this, but that relationship between Kippy and Virginia, they broke up. So at this time, I was taken to one of his girlfriend's house to be taken care of while he's still in Vietnam. Still a very lonely child at this time, looking for that love, but not knowing where to get it from. By the time I was about 10, this um, Virginia came back into my life. She ended up taking me to adopt me. She had married someone else and they adopted me. But not having a father that would love me, he was an orphan child, so he didn't know how to love me. But at the same time, during this time, as a teenager, I was confused and also lost, not knowing where, if, if I was ever going to be loved by anyone. Finally, one day, um, by the time I was about 11, I went to church for the very first time and I asked Jesus to come into my life. And I didn't know how to really read, but I still went to church and I felt something change in my heart and I continued to move on through life. By the time I was about 25, I had gotten married and I ended up having a baby girl with Down syndrome with kidney failure and bladder failure. I was devastated from that and I thought, there God must not love me because I can't even have a baby that is healthy. And I had no trust in man and I had no trust in God. That's how I felt at that time. But later in life, I just continued to press in. I started going to church, but I didn't understand how to read the Bible. I didn't understand how to have a relationship, but I still continued. By the time my daughter was 11 years old, she needed a kidney transplant. And I went to God and I said, God, if you're the real God that people say you are, you need to please allow my daughter to stay alive because it was her father that was giving her the kidney transplant. And having this pain in my heart, knowing that it was her father that was given the kidney and also she, I feared that they both might die. So I went and I just cried out to God and I said, I surrender, I want to be yours. Take me, use me whatever way. And from that day on, I started going to church and that in church, I 
didn't understand the church, but somebody had invited me to a small care group. And when I went into that small care group, they started, the preacher said, you guys need to know about the Father's love. There's nothing like the Father's love. And I looked at him and I said, what is a Father's love if you've never had that love? And he said, we're gonna pray for you. So these people gathered around and they laid hands on me and I felt this warmth come over me and they prayed that I would understand what the Father's love would be and what the love of Jesus is. And I, something changed inside of me from that moment on and I started going to church and I felt this anointing, this seed over me when I went to worship and I started to cry for the very first time where all this pain had been shoved down for years, I just started to cry and cry. And after that, I started going to church every Sunday, every Wednesday, and I started to do Bible studies. I went and got involved and plugged in with more of the church. And then after a while, I still felt this loneliness and this emptiness, and I couldn't understand why, because I felt, I started getting these nightmares and these nightmares were waking me and I, I would get up and start screaming. I was in a sweat and everything. And it was about babies. And um, I had had an, a couple abortions prior and I realized that I needed to get this healed. And I had such guilt and condemnation and shame for going to church and knowing that I had had abortions, but still I hadn't had any healing. I couldn't speak to anybody about it because it was a secret. But then I said, God, if you want me to get healed from this, then provide somebody to come along to help me through this because I'm holding all this baggage and I'm just pushing it down, but it's driving me. I just can't take it anymore. So after that, a lady, he provided somebody to come into my life. She told me about the Tri-Cities Pregnancy Center and went and got this program and I learned the truth. The truth was that Jesus Christ forgave me on that very day that I repented of what I had done. His precious blood covered me completely. And from that time on, I was realizing the truth. The truth was setting me free. I found out that I was a daughter of the Heavenly Father, that I was a princess and an heiress of a king. When I found out who I was, it just, boy, I was on fire and I said, I've got to share this with other women because we live in such bondage. I was in prison for over 25 years carrying that. And when I found out the truth, I was set free. And one of the things that I wanted to share was that was one thing that I still needed to heal from my inner being, from the spirit of rejection, from the spirit of abandonment, and also when you walk and you live in that life, it's very hard to be able to live a happy life. But God said, you just keep pressing in, and I did, and I continued to go to Christian studies, and I continued to press in the Word. And by the time I found out that I had a loving Father, that I came from heaven for such a time as this, to be restored and healed, but used in a mighty way to reach out to other hurting women. I said, God, take me, use me in every way you want to. And it's wonderful he has been bringing women into my life to share the good news with them. And the news set them free too. But at the same time, he is the healer of the soul. And right now he is healing souls in the whole world faster than ever. If you had any kind of trauma of neglect, abuse, child abuse, sexual abuse, molestation, you name it, it's a trauma to the soul. But right now, it's so wonderful that we are in this season where God is healing the soul. He is setting us free so we can have more joy, we can have more peace, and He is the healer, He is the redeemer. He wants us all to be whole and complete. And I thank you. This is my testimony. My name is Maria Opet.